Okay, hello everyone, Victor Momo from Excel Moments, and this is a follow-up to a recent video I did on summing up the last n non-blank cells in a row. I will link that video up here. And somebody asked a question in the comment section. Uh, how can we conditionally format the cells that fall into that bucket, or maybe the last three non-blank cells? So, for example, if you take this, you know, without going into everything I did in the last video, if you select three here, what it's going to do is it's going to select for you the last three, non-blank and non-zero. That was all we did at the end of that video. So if you look at this, these two cells are not blank, they are not zero, and this is the next cell that is not blank and not zero. Okay? So it skips this zero and it skips the blank and it gives you the sum of that as 120. In that particular video, I didn't use the conditional formatting. I only showed the formula, you know, to achieve the sum. Right, but I have done a previous video where I did the conditional formatting, but that was easier because the non blank cells we are well stacked in front of the blank cells. But here you have a situation where the blank cells you know occur randomly, so it gets a little tricky. That's what I'm here to do to kind of break down you know the formula approach to getting the conditional formatting to work. It's not the easiest, but it's not the most difficult. You just need to have the logic straight and you will be fine. So let me first of all explain what most people would try and why that wouldn't work okay once you are able to with some of the formulas i wrote in the previous video you know extract the last maybe say three non-blank cells what somebody would do is to test each cell against those three cells so meaning that if i return for example let me change this to maybe last two right if i return for example 33 and 35 what the person will do is then look up 52 within that. If it's not found, then, oh, yes, that's not the cell I'm interested in. If it's found, then it's a cell I'm interested in. The problem with that is that the value of a cell is not unique to it. Okay, let me give you an example with the data we have here. Let's select three here. And everybody, you know, just put your eye here. You can see that here we have two 57s, okay? So if you are using the value to do a lookup, it's going to think that this cell should also be formatted as well because 57, you know, is found within the last three cells. But no, it shouldn't be because we are only interested in the three non-blank cells, which is this three. So what are you going to do in that case? It means that rather than using the property of a cell, which is the value that is not unique to it, you have to use a unique property of a cell, which is what exactly? I will tell you, but first of all, I think I should break at this point. So allow for people who haven't subscribed to the channel to hit the subscribe button. I mean, it doesn't hurt to hit it. So please do subscribe to the channel. It does encourage me to do more videos and definitely helps to grow my channel. So back to Excel. So what you do is to use the unique property of every cell, which is its address or its location. That's one thing that is unique to the cell. So what we are going to do is kind of extract the addresses of all the cells that meet the criteria and we'll test the address of every cell against that. If it's found in there, then yes, we conditionally format. If not, we don't. So let's kind of start this up because I know it's going to be a relatively long video. So the first thing I'm going to do is to at least do the filter portion and we kind of build it, you know, around that. So the first thing is, let me check. I want to use row one. You know, I want to check these cells, first of all, that they are not zero and that they are not blank. Now, when you're writing the conditional formatting format, you have to have relative references at the back of your mind. I'm writing it in one cell, you know, but I'm also thinking that this formula is going to be dragged to other cells. So you have to know where you need to lock the references and where you need to release it. In this case, we are writing the formula for the first cell there, which is C3. But that formula needs to be able to work, you know, going down so we can lock the three right now for this range that we are checking this range c3 to h3 is always that range c to h so that needs to be locked c to h needs to be locked but three doesn't need to be locked so that it can also come down to the other rules so what i'm going to do is press f for three times okay so this and i'll test if this is what's not blank that'll be the first thing and then i also multiply which is also checking like an and testing also that this three too so i select this three and i do my f for three times is also what not zero it's going to return for me you know ones and zeros and if you look well you can see that the ones correspond to the cells that are not zero and not blank as you can see so one you know one one and the others are what are zero 
Okay, so that's fine. And this would be used as our filter criteria. So what do we need in this case now? We need not the values of the cell. We need the addresses of the cell. Okay, so how do we get the addresses of all those cells? The first function that comes to mind is, you know, like the cell function where it has an address property. So you can say cell address. If you select this cell, you see that it gives you, you know, C3, which is fine. So what you just decide to do is you decide to extend it, you know, and say, oh, let me just extend it here this way. But once you do that, you realize that you're getting only one value. You may now need to use like a map lambda helper function or a by row lambda helper function to extend it, you know, or by call to the other cells. That would work. But the challenge with that is that when you take such a formula into conditional formatting, conditional formatting doesn't like it. It doesn't like a lambda or lambda helper function within the formula construct. So we can't go this route because the cell is not able to give us, you know, the address of all the cells. Okay. So the other function you can use to get the address um, of the cells is the address function. So we can use address. Okay. The good thing about address is that it needs two things, a row number and a column number. You know that the cell is at the intersection of a row and a column. So what I'll do is, for the row number here, I'm going to feed it with everything. You know, I'm going to do row of this whole thing. And I would lock in the same way to three F4s, okay? So that it doesn't move, you know, C to H is locked, but three can move, all right? And then for the columns, I do column C3 to H3, okay? So basically, if you say row of C3, it's just saying what row is C3 on, which is going to be 3. If you say column C3, it means what column is C3 on, which is also 3. So 3-3 three, three gives you C3. That's basically what it is. So anyway, this will now give us the address of every cell in there. So you can see now we have the address of every cell from C3 to H3. So what we are going to do is that we are going to filter these addresses based on 1010 that we have here. Why are we doing that? This tells us whether the cell is non-zero or non-blank, okay? This just tells us the addresses, but we only need the addresses of the cells that are non-zero and non-blank. So I will take this formula, you know, and use it, you know, against the one zeros as a filter, okay? So that's basically what we are going to do. So we can copy this. So it's like we are filtering the addresses. So let's come in here where we have the one zeros, you know, this one here. You know, if you want to make it, you know, easy to read, you could use, you know, um, Alt-Enter to kind of just move that down a bit. Uh, I think I took something away. Okay. All right. So let's, let me start first of all with the filter function. So I do a filter function. All right. So I want to filter in this case. Yeah. I noticed I was not expanding the formula, but I want to filter, you know, the addresses. So those are the addresses there based on what the criteria of 1001. That's really it. So it's only going to give me the addresses of the cells that are non-zero and non -blank. So let's close this. Okay. And I think we have that done. All right. So good. So let me just take this out. So what it has done now is it's only returning, you know, the addresses of the cells that are non-blank and non-zero. That's why we have just three of them. Because the only three in this row that are non-blank, non-zero. Okay. Good. But don't forget that with this value in here. We are choosing whether we want the last three, the last two, the last one. So what we are going to do is, like in the first video, we use the take function. The take function will help us extract from here the number that's needed, whether it's two or three or one. And don't forget that we are starting from the right, okay? Because we said last non-blank, not first non-blank. So what we are going to do is we are going to put the take function around this. So we are going to do take we can decide to enter it into multiple rows, but that's okay. And then we come to the end. For the take, we are interested in columns now, not rows. So I'm saying select this. So this would give me, you know, take three columns. But now because I'm starting from the right, you know, I will use a negative index. Because if I use it this way, it's going to always start from the left, but I'm interested in counting from the right. So I'm going to put a negative index so that it starts this way. This one, two, not one, two. You get that, okay? So let's close this now. So now with the take function, the take now will be able to, you can see that this will be dynamic. Now if I change this to two, you know, it's only going to give me the last two addresses. What? F3, G3, which corresponds to this two, okay? And if I say I want the last one that is not zero, not blank, here is just G3, and that's that. So we have this and this is fine right now. Okay, good. So once we have that, you know, we are good. So this, you know, is the pool or the array that contains, you know, the addresses of the cells that meet the criteria. So what we now do is that we will check, you know, the address of every cell against this, more or less like, can you find the address of, if I'm here now, I'm in C3, can you find C3 within this bucket? 
Okay, if you can find it within this bucket, then it should be colored. If you can't find it, then it should not be colored. So there are different ways you know you can approach it. You could use a sum function to test how many times it appears. You could just use a match function to say match the address of this cell within what has been returned. If it sees it, it's going to give you the position where it is found. If it doesn't see it, then it's going to give you a hash and a which you can take care of at the end of the day. So let me do this. So let's take this down. So let's use here, let's use an X match. So what I want to do is I want to match, you know, the address of this cell, this C3. I want to match the address within what I have written, meaning help me check. Can you find the address of C3 in here? Okay. So, but you know that this formula is going to be dragged right and down. So this formula needs to be you know, dynamic, relative. Okay. So you don't write it and just lock C3. If not, you won't be able to use it across the other cells. So in this case, I'm going to pull up the address function, right? Now for the row, instead of typing, I can't just do this. This is fine. Yes, this will give me C3. But this formula needs to go rightwards and downwards. So what am I going to do? I'm basically going to, instead of saying 3, I will just put row of that C3. I know this will give me a 3. As this formula moves to the right, it will also, you know, adjust accordingly. Then for the column bit of it, I also do column of what? C3. So this is still giving me the same 3, 3, but just in a way that allows the formula to move left and right. Okay. So, if you actually hover over this, you will see what I mean, okay? So, you can see that it gives you what? C3. That's what it gives you, okay? So, that's the X match portion of that. So, we are matching that against these values that have been returned. So, let's close the bracket and see. Okay? So, it tells us that it can be found in first position. Let's drag this right and see what happens with the others. All right. So, everywhere it can be found, you can see there's a number, 2, 3, 1. Meaning, yes, this is found as the second you know, um, elements in the array. This is the third one. So the N is, you know, are not found. Conditional formatting, you know, just like simple case, true or false, or in another case, one and zero, or in another case, zero and non-zero. So any number and zero, the non-zero numbers would be highlighted, zero will not be highlighted. But basically, you can just use here and its number so that you can see true for numbers and false for non-numbers. So basically, I'm going to come here and I'm going to put number around this and I'm going to close the bracket. Okay, so now I have true. I'm going to take this, you know, to the right. So this is for row three, you know, this is for row three, row four, row five, just so you can put it in context. Okay, and then we can now take this formula down, you know, to the other rows, maybe like row 10. But well, I mean, it's just for demonstration purposes. Okay, so now let me reduce my uh, formula by editing. Uh -huh. Okay, good. So now we have the formula that shows us, you know, true, false, false, true. So if you change this, watch this. In this case, this first row here, you can see what we have selected. If you change this to two now, it's only going to see you this and this. So it means this last row should become a false if what we've written is correct. So we change this to two. And you can see this is now false. Okay. So and this is true. This is true. And the same thing applies on the other rows. Look at this row here. These two should be true. You can see them here. True. Next row, these two should be true. You can see them here. Right. So this formula you have in here, just the formula you have in the first cell. This is just, I did this so that everybody can see the true false. So you know what's going on. This formula, single formula here, you know, would be taken into conditional formatting. And this formula would then be able to expand and, you know, um, contract as necessary. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these cells, which are the cells I want to conditionally format. And then I go to conditional formatting and I do, I already have a rule in there. So you may say, oh, Victor, are you sure you're not playing tricks on us? So let me delete that one and let me put a new rule. The new rule is just going to use the formula I just put in there. So I'm going to say here, and I'm going to paste my formula in there. So that's my formula, you know, basically it's going to give a true or a false. You know, I need to apply to every cell in the range. Let's choose a different color so that you know, you're convinced that I actually just did it. <laughs> okay, let's do apply. Okay, good. All right, okay. So now you can see. Let's change this to three and let's see what happens. If you change this to three, okay, yeah, so you can see one, two, and three. If you change it to four, it's going to conditionally format four, but from the right, right? And any row that doesn't have up to four, well, it's just going to leave it as is. So that's how you get it to work. It's not the hardest, you know, but it's not also the simplest. You just need to have a clear, you know, uh, path in your mind and also understand some things that wouldn't work 
because I've tested them a few times in the past, I know some things that wouldn't work, which is why I didn't use the cell function and I decided to use the address function, which is why, yeah, because of course, in the cells case, cell will only return the address of the first cell. And by the time you use the lambda helper function on it, the conditional formatting doesn't like lambda function. So that's one thing. Then the X lookup, you shouldn't be looking up the value because if value is not unique to a cell, what is really unique every time to a cell is its address or its location. So basically the logic here was simple. You know, look for each row, look at the cells that meet the criteria, meaning that they are not blank and they are not zero. Once you have those cells, you get the addresses of those cells, okay? So now you have the addresses, then you now test the address of each cell against that array that has been returned to check if the address of maybe this cell, for example, is found in that return array. If it's found in there, then it should be colored. If it's not found, it should not be colored. Basically, is the logic. You know? And how the functions you use specifically, you know, just depend on, you know, how you want to think about it at that point. I decided to use an X match. I could have gone, you know, some other way, but it still works. So I hope, you know, you um, like this video. Thanks for staying true. I know it's a relatively long one, but again, sometimes we need to explain these things well so that people at least have a good idea. And when you watch it, maybe one more time, you kind of really get it. But once you know how those functions work individually, piecing them together, it's not really a problem. Okay, so if you like this video, please do hit the like button. Please also subscribe to the channel Excel Moments. For now, I'm out.